All right, well, Harley stopped by with um, <clears throat> Pierre, who works for Gonet Medeville, which uh, is kind of an interesting producer. You know, we have a uh, Xavier Gonet, fourth generation uh, champagne grower, married Julie Medville from Sauternes and the Graves region of Bordeaux, and uh, their marriage consummated, and now they have estates in both of these regions. And kind of an interesting thing because, you know, Bordeaux is the only area that doesn't produce sparkling wine really in France, so, you know, picked a good person to marry, someone in Champagne. Now you have sparkling wine to add to the white, red, and killer dessert wine. There's your a lot. Sauternes, really nice stuff. This whole portfolio of wines, really nice little wines. Uh, the Gonet Medville Tradition Champagne Brut, the first time that I've had anything from this champagne house. It's located in I, and it's a champagne-based, uh, Chardonnay-based champagne, so you get, you know, really nice bright acidity in these Chardonnay-based wines, and they only use Premier and Grand Cru in this juice. A uh, nice amount of that toasted brioche kind of nuance, a little lemon drop candy and uh, ginger, candy gingered spice, really nice creamy texture on the tongue with a good amount of that apple and pear fruit showing. Low dosage, so you really nice little tongue tingly acidity and minerality showing there and a little bit of floral spice and nuance. A really very good little champagne there for 61 bucks, maybe just a little bit. A little bit expensive. Okay, next up we had the Rosé Extra Brutes, and there's 3% red wine from Ambonet blended with a 70% Chardonnay from Menil and Sir Auger, and 27% Pinot from uh, Bissioule. All right, well, this is a pretty pale amber-colored salmon uh, rosé with cherry and raspberry kind of fruit. Touch of smoke and orange peel in here. Got a complex bouquet there. A nice amount of red cherry and raspberry fruit on the tongue with a chalky kind of minerally nuance showing there. Bone dry finish. Excellent bottle of rosé. 78 bucks. All right, well, next up we had some Bordeaux Blanc. We're always looking for a good value in Bordeaux Blanc. The first 2010 vintage wine to pass my lips, I believe. And uh, this wine was from a vineyard site near the Respite. Menville, uh, which is the main property, 60-40 blend of Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. Touch of gravel to that mineral and uh, melon, rather, and white grapefruit citrus. A light and refreshing style, a note of salt on the finish. Leaves the tongue salivating for food. One of the things I love about, you know, Sauvignon Blanc, but maybe a little bit hefty in price for what it is. A Bordeaux Blanc at around $20 retail. Okay, the Respid Melville from Graves. A 50-50 blend of Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc with a touch of Muscadet to add structure and a richness to Semillon, the raciness of the Sauvignon Blanc. A really good balance here, the pink grapefruit-like citrus shown with a touch of gravelly minerality and a light musky nuance there. A nice savoriness to the palate with good weight in the, in the mid-palate, pink grapefruit, and a touch of that saltiness shown on the finish. A very good bottle of Graves. Uh, 24 bucks, maybe a little better value actually than the Bordeaux Blanc at 20 but, um, you know, really nice little wines nonetheless. We're going to work on the prices here, Harley. Okay, the Respid Menville Graves. Um, this is a red Graves, blend of 55% Cabernet and 45% Merlot. And a lot of nice uh, stuff coming out of this appellation here, Graves. And, uh, you know, fine bouquet, notes of pencil lead, fresh plowed, gravelly kind of earth, and uh, coffee, black currants, cassis. A nice amount of structure on the palate with fine tannins. 2008, more of a classic style vintage. You know, really long and fine and nice freshness there showing up in the uh, finish as well. Very good bottle of Graves. Next up, the Sauternes, Les Justices. Uh, and this family's owned Gillet since the 1700s. Wow. Uh, it's not the second label, but it's a separate estate, I believe, and none of the other Sauternes properties, none of their Sauternes properties use oak. Kind of unique. Uh, they use concrete. All right, well, uh, peach and honeysuckle on the nose with some nice vanilla cream. Pretty complex bouquet, a nice clean style of Sauternes with good richness and nicely balanced acidity. Uh, nice honey nuance to the finish. One of the things that Sauternes gets as they age this 2005, a great vintage not only for red but for Sauternes and for dry whites. And the 88 Gillette Creme de Tête Sauternes. And this isn't made every year, but it stays for 20 years in cask. 20 years, I mean, in tank. And they originally started doing this after World War II because they didn't want the Germans to take it. So they figured it would be harder to take if they left it in the tank than putting it in an oak cask. And I guess oak casks were kind of hard to find after World War II as well. But uh, they just started this and, you know, they started tasting the wine. They said, you know, it's really good. And they came up with, uh, it used to be all different, you know, eight times they would do it with each vintage. Well, they don't make this wine every year, but it wasn't always exactly 20 years like it is today. But this wine's got a really unique bouquet of orange peel, orange blossoms, a lovely honey character to the peach and quince-like fruit on the nose. Very complex, slight 
metallic note to the finish there and a nice candied pineapple and peach fruit on the tongue. Nice deal of intense intensity and good freshness and that lovely honey character showing through at the finish. Most excellent juice, folks. All right, well, next up, we got Matt in for a quickie with uh, La Hota.